our brains haven't changed a lot in 200,000 years um, or 150,000 years, roughly. Mm. Do you think that our minds are still changing and evolving? And do you think that will be affected by our understanding of it? And yeah. is it possible for us to influence how our minds develop further as yeah. we sort of grow as a species? First of all, I, I would challenge that idea a bit that, you know, we haven't evolved much in 200,000 years. I don't think we know. Okay. I just don't know. Um, okay. If you think about evolution the way Darwin described it, it's a very slow process. But there's a lot of really smart people who study evolution and biology who think that it's it's um, it, there there it can happen much quicker. It, it, it's not just like um, I'm reading a book by Stuart Kaufman called The Origin of Order, and he talks about this. It, it, like the bottom line of all this is that sometimes evolution can happen very rapidly and things can change very quickly. And um, so it's not clear to me just because our brains may be the same size they were 200,000 years ago that they haven't evolved. So we just don't know. I think we just have to say we don't know. But if, even if we assume that um, evolution is continuing, sure, but it's now under different pressures, right? You know, in the past, we'd all be starving and, um, you know, literally that would be the normal situation. And uh, trying to live and, and not die young and have kids, um, and so it was a very brutal world. And now, you know, we we don't have those same pressures now. Not too different. And so, um, I don't know what the evolutionary pressures are now, but clearly, um, it's still going on. It, it's probably going slow. We're not seeing anything big happening right now, but I think it's far more likely that we will be able to modify ourselves, basically modify our genes directly very rapidly in the near future. I mean, we know how to do this from a technology point of view. Um, whether we want to allow people to do it is a separate question. Uh, I think we will ultimately, and uh, we don't really know how to modify our genes, but it's going to be, seems to me within the next, you know, in decades or hundreds of years, we will, people will be readily modifying our genes. And, and if you want to call that evolution, go for it. it's not Darwinian evolution, um, but it's, it's a continued modification of our gene pool. Uh, and it's very easy to slip into this. It's like saying, well, would I want to prevent my kids from having some deadly disease if they're going to inherit? Well, of course I would. I wouldn't want them to have that. So let's make that modification. Well, you know, I, do I want to make sure they're not too small or too tall? Because that's bad for your health, too. Okay, let's do that. You know? <laughs> and before you know it, we're like, okay, let's dial in the brain, you know. <laughs> um, so I you know, some, some people think that's terrible. I think it's almost inevitable we're going to do these things. So. Evolution will change from being a Darwinian evolution to a human-controlled evolution. This gets back to the point I made earlier about, you know, we're at this inflection point where we don't have to be driven by our old brain, our old biology, and our old evolutionary pressures. We can now choose our own future should we want to. I know some people... Do you think that's still... Yeah. Do you think that's still technically like a natural selection, survival of the fittest way? Because if we can all change things individually, then the most successful of those changes will be the ones that become uh, like endemic or, or, yeah. or become like the most widely used. Is that still like I don't, you know, evolution? I don't know. It's interesting because, you know, in the past, success was reproduction. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, so think about it from a gene's perspective. You know, uh, a, a gene doesn't really want to do anything, but a gene would, you know, it, it, a success to a gene would be that it gets recreated over and over again. That's this Darwinian evolution. However, imagine humans modify a gene and we create a new gene. And you can decide if you want to put that into your children's uh, DNA. Okay. So we're not, that replication of that gene is not dep dependent on biological procreation. It's just depends on some human deciding, I want that gene versus some other gene. And so you could argue, I think what you're saying, Josh, is you could argue um, that that's a type of natural selection. It's, it's a little bit like, you know, computer programs have a natural selection. Which ones do you, which apps do you download on your phone? Well, that's, yeah, that's a Darwinian evolution, right? Like some do better than others and some die out. Um, so, so genes may still be evolving, but we'll be controlling the evolution and um, and which ones are successful? The ones we choose, not the which ones that just pre prevent us from starving. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's crazy. I know. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the podcast. 
Don't forget our sponsor, ExpressVPN, and my book, Brexit, The Establishment Civil War, can both be found in the links in the description below. And also, please like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. It's the best way to help us grow. Until next time, thanks for listening. Screw the hedge funds. You can make as many rules as you want, but if there's no teeth behind them, what's the point? Like Citadel is potentially just gone in a few months. It feels like financial institutions, that they are all laughing at us by buying GME. <laughs> Screw the hedge funds. Like, I will lose my entire investment if it brings them down. Why on earth, last May, could you buy the entire company for $200 million? What's been happening on Reddit and in social media and in the marketplace? has never been seen before. I argue that nothing is off the table. There is nothing off the table when dealing with the volumes of money in something as big as the United States uh, stock market. The hedge funds have clearly underestimated a group of a group of people raised on Friday night World of Warcraft rates. Dark pools, they are they're another uh, mechanism to manipulate and cheat. Mainstream journalists don't say these things for a number of reasons. Uh, one is their sources are the people that I'm talking about, and so they can't call somebody a crook. Super Stonk and the other communities that have emerged are a hive mind, the likes of which we have never seen before. It's madness and brilliance, insanity and genius all rolled into one. It's very possible that Citadel will be gone in a few months. And, and not just Citadel, but the entire financial system has the potential to come crashing down. These crooks continue to gamble recklessly with the world economy, and this could be the moment that they finally get their justice. <laughs>